Welcome to this demonstration of Flyway and Flyway Desktop with PostgreSQL. Flyway is a powerful migration framework that supports more than 25 databases. It allows you to create repeatable, standardized processes to all of your de database development through your normal release pipelines. It provides clear visibility into all of the code changes that are happening at the database layer. Flyway provides a lot of mechanisms for actually enforcing standards and safety checks for all of the changes that are happening within your database. And finally, this is all provided so that you can begin to bring automation into your development pipeline at the database layer from your development teams all the way through testing and into production. In today's demo, we're going to modify a database to prepare it for a new feature that the development team is working on. We're also going to create a new regular expression code check to make sure that our developers are naming the tables correctly based on some agreements we've recently made. Then we'll use Flyway Desktop to actually generate those migrations for us to help get the database from its previous state, the state model that Flyway is maintaining for us, to the new version of the database through the migration. We'll commit all of these changes into the repository and then we'll push them into our pipeline and see it follow the process we would expect. First, we'll build the scripts to make sure there are no issues. Then we'll promote it into a testing environment. We'll run code analysis and code checks that we can then verify to make sure everything is okay before we promote these changes to production. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are in the database and we're about to make changes again, just to prepare the database kind of at a, a really basic level uh, with some new changes for this feature that the team's ready to work on. Now I'm currently using dBeaver. It is a pretty standard IDE within the Postgres world. It's actually cross database. You can use it for many different databases. Uh, so I have this script that I've gotten started that I've begun to use. The first thing I noticed as I went to implement these features to help get the team started is that we had been discussing tracking the social network um, you know, handles for actors within our movie database. And one of the developers along the way had started to create some of these uh, columns in the actor table. Well, that doesn't really allow us to expand the, the social networks that we might want to track. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually delete those columns. We don't need them. We want to keep the database clean. Now in dBeaver, if I highlight some text and I hit control enter, it will actually execute that uh, SQL on the database. So now that those columns are gone, I can create the first table that we need. This is going to track kind of like a static data table. It's just going to be a list of all the social networks that we plan to track for all of our actors. This is going to be an ID, a name, and whether or not, you know, this is a required um, social network that we want to track for all, all actors in the database. Then the second table we're going to create is simply a linking table. It links actor IDs with the social network ID, and then it allows us to uh, track the handle of the actor on that network. Now, this is not a unique constraint between actor ID and social network ID, because an actor might have more than one handle in a social network, whether it be Twitter, Mastodon, uh, you know, Instagram, what have you. Uh, they might have more than one handle per network, so it's not going to be a unique constraint. It's just going to be a simple linking table. We're going to create some of the indexes on that table that we would expect to use for performance reasons. And then a couple other things have happened as we've been talking about uh, getting this feature ready. The first is that our uh, BI team, our intelligence team, uh, is going to need to write some new reports. And one of the functions they're going to need is actually the cross-tab functionality in Postgres. Now, this is one of the most powerful features of many for Postgres is the ability to extend it through the use of these extensions. Now, in Flyway, it's really powerful to be able to track the installation and upgrades of extensions over time. With Postgres, if you, are, uh, if you update an extension as part of your process, but it doesn't make it to all of the other servers through the pipeline, then you can really start to run into problems. The fact that uh, Flyway tracks extensions for Postgres and the extension versions it's a really powerful feature. So let's go ahead and install that TableFunk extension, which will allow our 
intelligence team to write cross-tab functions. Now, the final thing we want to create, at least to get started, is this error log table. As a team, we've been talking about better ways to track errors in the application, and we just want to start with a simple table. Now, someone passed the SQL to me, and I wasn't really paying attention when I did this, and I'm just going to go ahead and execute it verbatim, and it will create that, but I notice after the fact, or maybe as a DBA later, I realize that we need to ensure these kinds of table names don't get in. In Postgres, any object, like a table name or a column name, that is not, quote, qualified, will always be coalesced to lowercase. When you, quote, qualify something from that point forward, every SQL query you write needs to qualify it to get the case, the camel case in this, in this instance, that, that the developer is expecting. So we want to avoid, we want to make sure that these kinds of errors don't get through to production. And so we're going to go ahead and write a rule that Flywheel will run against all of our scripts to make sure that none of these kind of get through the system accidentally so that we can catch them ahead of time. And we want to use, we've agreed as a team, to use what we call lower snake case, all right? So let's go ahead and write that rule so that we can make sure it gets caught. So I'm now on my database project, and you'll see in uh, Flyway we have a couple of things. We have the schema model. These are all of the tables and migrations, uh, views, table sequences, everything that uh, you know may, makes up the state of this database. And as we make changes to the state, Flyway will modify these files to use it as a kind of a source of truth. In here, we can create a rules folder and copy in the rules that Flyway provides to us and actually create our own. And so I'm creating this rule and it's a regular expression. And I tested this ahead of time using a, a website like regex101. And what this does is make sure that if this regular expression is matched, that's a flag, it should not match. If I had this table named correctly, like error log all over case, notice the regular expression does not match. As soon as I put a quote around it, or I use uh, any kind of camel casing in the name, the expression will match and that will flag it as, you know, at least a, a violation. It doesn't mean the build will stop unless we tell it to, but at least it will get flagged in our code analysis reports so that we can take care of it ahead of time. So I've, I've figured out that regex. I've gone ahead and created this rule. It's part of my project. And so now we can go to Flyway and be, really begin this whole process of generating the migration scripts we need. So I have this Pajila movie database uh, project set up, and I'm going to let Flyway help us uh, figure out what changes we've made to the database so that it can get that model. So as soon as I start Flyway, I can either refresh by clicking on the refresh button, and that will simply say, what is the state I expect and what is the state of the development database you currently have? And it will show it here. So in the schema model, it says, hey, th these are the changes that I see. We noticed that it picked up the uh, extension. That's great. It even picked up the version number. It picked up our table that's quoted, which we're going to check later. It picked up the indexes. It even picked up the modification of the actors table, deleting those two columns. So now what we're going to do is say, take all of those changes and save them to the project itself. So it's updating that model that it's maintaining of our database. This is really powerful because this allows us to see over time, you know, exactly how a table changed. When did a column get added? When did it get modified? Maybe, you know, change from, uh, you know, varchar 10 to a varchar, um, you know, 24, 26, whatever that might be. So now we have our state model and we can now use Flyway Desktop to actually help us generate the migrations to go from the previous state to the current state. So it's gonna run a similar check. It's going to say, what is the state I expect? What is the state of the development database? Just to verify everything is the same and nothing has changed. Now we see those same modifications and we go ahead and say, please generate those scripts for us. Now you could have uh, you know, modified those scripts. You could have taken a little bit of that SQL that we already ran and created your own migration script. This is just a, a nice way to make sure that we get all of the pieces in the right order 
uh, so that our database can be updated correctly. Now, Flyway has been configured to produce two scripts every time we ask it to generate uh, you know, our migrations for us. The first one up top is our version script, uh, usually denoted, you'll see in the file system with a V. So Flyway has four kinds of scripts. V stands for version, getting from one version to the next. U is an undo script, and that's what we see below. It is the steps to roll back a specific version script. Then there's an R script, that's a repeatable script. Now, that is a way to do uh, often things like a static data. You know, our social network table is a good example of that. We want to make sure every time we do an update, if we need to add a new social network, we want to keep it together in one script, not kind of piecemeal throughout various migration scripts. And so a repeatable script is run every time. As long as it's idempotent, it won't produce an error. And then finally, we have what we call baseline script. And this is really powerful when you want to use Flyway against an existing database. Maybe you're not using a migration process right now, but you want to get there. You want to use a powerful tool like Flyway. Well, you can take Flyway, create the state model of that existing database, create a baseline script, and then begin using migrations from that point forward. Really powerful. We've created our scripts. It picked up things like the extension, including the version. It uh, has the new tables we created and so forth. We're going to go ahead and save those scripts. I'm not going to change the names right now. I could. I could save the description. Okay, maybe I will. This one would be social networks. All right. I'm going to put a underscore between them. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and say save. Now, this saves everything to the project itself. And finally, we could do one of two things here. We could go to the Migrations tab and we see that we have this new migration. And we could use Flyway Desktop to manually select various databases that we have versioned and run this manually. Instead, we're gonna use the power of our pipeline and version control to push these changes to a repository and let the pipeline do its work. So we're gonna say adding social network uh, changes. We're gonna select all of the files. It includes our migration script. It includes the state model. It includes that custom rule that we created that should uh, fire and make sure that we are not doing something incorrect. And we're finally gonna push those changes up to the repository. Now for the rest of this demo, we will be using Azure DevOps. It does not matter what your pipeline tool is. It could be Azure DevOps. It could be GitHub uh, Actions. It could be GitLab Pipelines, whatever you're using. Uh, should, uh, will work with Flyway. We have examples for many different pipeline tools. Now, in this specific pipeline, we have two different uh, pipelines set up. One is a build pipeline. And all this is doing is taking any commit on the development branch, which is what we were working on. It's simply going to build a clean database, run every migration script, simply to make sure that they all run without error. This is a really good first kind of uh, hygiene step to make sure that everything is correct on a brand new database, uh, just to verify. Once that's complete, we can go ahead and begin the PR process. Now for this repository, what we've done is set up a second pipeline for a PR process. Once we begin the pull request, it will trigger the pipeline that would deploy these changes once it's approved to our testing environment. From there, it will build the uh, migration, it will apply it to our test database, it will run code analysis. It will show us the dry run of the script, what would happen in production. It will uh, show if, the, if there's any drift. Has someone modified the production database uh, compared to the model we expect? It's really powerful so that we know ahead of time whether something has changed in our production environment before we try and apply this new migration. So it's a very simple process we have here. You could get it as uh, detailed as you need within your pipeline. I will assume that we've looked at this PR. I'm going to go ahead and approve it and complete it so that we can merge it. And that merge action will kick off the next pipeline, which will build against our test database to start. So you see that with this Azure pipeline, we have a, a test deployment and a production deployment. In the test deployment, you'll see that it's doing very similar things to um, in both pipelines. But there's going to be a, a step in the middle that actually enables code review. So it won't go to production 
until we have specifically said that we are okay with the changes and we can move them forward. So what it's doing now is it's built the database. It's actually running the code checks in the drift report, and it will produce the report, which I'll show you in just a second. This will let us see what the script is, if any of the scripts that we've produced have failed any of our code checks, uh, you know, things of that nature that allow us to really make sure everything we, we've produced is what we expect. All right, so that step is done. It's produced an artifact, which we can then go look at in the form of a code report. And this code report has can have all four of these things. It really depends on how you've configured Flyway. First, we've configured it to show us a dry run, the exact script that will run on the database uh, to update it to this current state. We also have done code analysis. Now you'll notice that in this file, it shows us that it caught our quoted table name. So it picked up our new custom rule, ran it against the script and says, wait a second, one of the names, one of the tables in this file does not, uh, you know, this rule matches, which means there's a problem. So we could go back and change it for the sake of this demo. We're going to let it through. We can figure out how to fix that later. But this would be a good way that you could verify all of those steps as you move along. You can see if there's any drift in your production database. Unfortunately, there is none uh, in this example. But let's say someone had logged into prod to uh, modify an index to fix a problem, but we forgot to add that change to our state model in our migration process. It would show up here. We would know to stop the migration, go make those changes, fix the state, and get these migrations up to where they need to be so that we can move the database forward. And then finally, we can actually look at an actual change report. This just shows you all the objects that will be added and the objects that will be modified. All right, with that in, in, in play, if we believe this is in the correct state, maybe, you know, again, that one rule aside, we're going to go ahead and review these changes and say, we looked at all the changes. We are okay with that. Looks good to me. And we can say resume. And so now this will begin to apply it to the production database as well. We could watch that happen. As that is happening, however, we're going to go look and see what happened in our test database. So this is our development database. We're going to look at the test database and see if the tables have been uh, added to the database. Now you'll notice we have the error log table. If I look at the actor table, we'll see that those two columns are gone. They were removed or dropped. And then we should see down below our social networks table, which is that linking table. And then we have our actor social table. Everything's been applied to test. Assuming that the production database is done, we see the deployment has been successful. So we can go back and actually verify that on production as well. That is the Pajila database. And we see those same changes have been applied. So this has been a very brief demo to show you some of the power of what Flyway Desktop and Flyway Command Line can do for you. You can maintain the state model of your database. It's a really good way to see exactly from change to change what's happened in every object within your Postgres database. It can be used to help you generate those migrations so you can actually iterate on those changes first before generating the final migration uh, within your project. You can write powerful code analysis uh, expressions that allow you to make sure changes don't get to production that shouldn't be there, uh, you know, maybe naming conventions, things of that nature. And then you can use Flyway in whatever pipeline tool you have to allow this process to happen in an automated, repeatable fashion that brings a lot of certainty to your database change process. I hope this has been helpful for you. Please reach out with any questions you have, and we look forward to seeing you in more demonstrations of how Flyway can be used within your Postgres environment to really bring power to your database changes and automation through your pipelines. Take care.